I don't know about you, but it seems like 2023 was absolutely packed with vinyl reissues, quite a few of which haven't seen a pressing since their original, and even some that had never been pressed to vinyl. So I figured it prudent to dig in, count down my personal top 10 reissues from 2023. Of course, the big caveat, I had to add them to my collection. This list even includes one that just missed out on being part of my top 10 albums turning 10 in 2023 video, and stay tuned for that. It's pretty high on the list. Hey fellow music nerds, it's Andy with the Fence Post Vinyl Channel. If you like videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, then ring that little bell so you'll be notified when new videos go live. Let's begin with an honorable mention because I always like to do that. Everything by the Long Winters. Having spent a fair share of time in the Pacific Northwest, more specifically, Northwest Washington, during the mid-2000s and 2010s, I have a special affinity for Northwest-based indie rock. Bands like Death Cab for Cutie, Fleet Foxes, and The Decemberists. One band that I saw quite a few times is the Barsook label group The Long Winters. Their albums have long been out of print on vinyl, and the prices of them have continued to rise. Here they come in as a honorable mention, because technically they're not yet reissued. It's been announced with a reissue date of late December 2023. The reissues come as a collaboration between Barsook Records, which is where The Long Winters released their albums, and Bandbox. I did pre-order the three full-length LPs, those being The Worst You Can Do Is Harm, the band's debut from 2002, When I Pretend to Fall from 2003, and their final album, Putting the Days to Rest from 2006. Bandbox is also reissuing the Ultimatum EP from 2005, but I didn't pre-order that one. Sadly, the other day I received notification from Bandbox that a production delay has pushed the completion of these into mid to late January of 2024. Does that mean it'll be a 2024 release or retain the 2023? I don't know. Personally, I think it should be 2024. What do you think? Number 10, Bull of the Woods by the 13th Floor Elevators. I just covered Bull of the Woods by the 13th Floor Elevators, both in my Record Store Day Black Friday 2023 vinyl haul video and as a Fun Facts album history video, uh, and I'll drop both links in the description. This has been on my want list for ages, and I finally got my hands on it, and it comes with this cool OBI strip and is pressed to white vinyl. This was the band's third and final studio album, though as one YouTuber called it, on my Record Store Day Black Friday video, some do consider this the band's fourth LP, due to live actually being a compilation of studio demos and recordings with kind of audience noise being added in during production. But as that was technically a compilation and made of quite a few demos, Wikipedia notes it as the band's third, and so do I. Number nine. Good Humor by Saint Etienne. All right, I love this because it says faithful reissue of the 1998 album. So technically this is what, the 25th anniversary pressing and it comes on limited edition colored splatter vinyl and it's really cool looking too, check this out. I love that rich green, that, uh, that splatter looks amazing, that white splatter. Good Humor by Saint Etienne is the longtime UK indie and alt dance band's fourth studio album. Originally released in 1998 on Creation Records, the band used the American spelling of humor due to frontwoman Sarah Cracknell being fed up with the quintessentially English tag. It saw the group taking a slight and rare step away from the dance hooks of their earlier albums, adding in a more acoustic and orchestral elements to their sound. Stateside, Good Humor was released on Sub Pop. Ultimately, the band would return to their original label, Heavenly, and that's where we find this reissue. Number eight, 
Bowery Electric's self-titled LP. From the tail end of the hype surrounding the original shoegaze era was Bowery Electric with their debut self-titled LP, released in 1995 on Cranky Records. This is an interesting one, as the band had some definitively shoegaze leanings, but they also leaned quite heavily into post-rock here on Bowery Electric. Look at the albums that followed and you'll find that Discogs has them classified predominantly as trip hop, among a few other scatterings of subgenres. I hadn't spent much time with Bowery Electric before picking up this reissue, and I have to credit the Omaha introvert, Hannah, here on YouTube for turning me on to this pressing. I picked it up pretty much the moment I saw her talk about it. True to a lot of what you'll find on Cranky, there's not much here. It's just the sleeve and black wax, but I still dig it quite a bit. Per the hype sticker, this pressing includes four songs from the band's Drop EP, which is what turned Cranky onto the band upon its release in 1994 on High Fidelity Recordings. Definitely a worthy addition right there. Number seven, and I kind of cheated on this one a little bit because I have three LPs in my hands, but only one of them technically makes this list. It is Cody. Which one? Well, let's dig into that. I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with Codeine this year, and for that matter, a handful of other slowcore artists from the 1990s. This was a bit of a tough one, and I ended up picking three reissues up from the band. First was this right here. What about The Lonely? This was originally released uh, in 2013 as a Record Store Day exclusive. The music was pulled direct from the mixing board at a November 1993 live performance at Chicago's Lounge Axe while opening for Nancy Starr. Then there was the White Birch, which was the band's 1994 album. Lots of great stuff here as well, though the sleeve seems a bit flimsy to me, which, I don't know, it's weird. So my choice on this list goes to the band's 1990 debut, Frigid Stars LP. I love this album, and I think the clear with black splatter vinyl looks phenomenal. They call it Heat Death, which aligns nicely with the cover art. Favorites here include the tracks Cave In, the, uh, the album opener D, and Pickup Song. But overall, I think it's a great release from cover to cover. Really solid stuff. Number six, Hate by the Delgados. There are a few on this list. I have to give a shout out to Mike from Play Vinyl in the Milky Night channel here on YouTube. If it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't have this album in my collection, nor one or two others by another band coming up here next. I remember being turned on to the Delgados probably around the time this band called it quits. 2005. The title track to this, the band's 2002 LP Hate, is really what drew me in. I've always thought it was such an interesting track. At face value, it's incredibly upbeat, but dig into the lyrics and it's anything but. It's ridiculously dark. What you get on that song is a fascinating look at our society and culture. And 20 years later, I think what you read in the lyrics and hear in the song has never been more relevant. Overall, this album is great. Production-wise, I think it could be a little bit warmer, have a little bit more depth, but overall, I'm quite satisfied with the album and I've wanted it in my collection for freaking ever. Number five, Split by Lush. We've been seeing quite the resurgence of shoegaze in the past year or two, and with it, Lush has reissued quite a bit from their catalog. Split found the band honing their sound a bit, and I quite dig it. Originally released in 1994, the album celebrates 30 years here in a month. So yeah, great, great stuff. Like many, an easy favorite from the album is Desire Lines, but there's a lot of great stuff here. There were a handful of 2023 pressings on this one, and my copy is the clear vinyl pressing. Number four, Spooky by Lush. 
such a great, great album. A bit removed from what you get on their later album Split, but Spooky seemed to be a bit more raw and unfiltered. A little less dreamy, but with still plenty of that beloved shoegaze swirl. My copy is the Bandbox version on Orange Wax. Favorite song? Ocean. I talk more about both Spooky and Split in my coverage of these albums here on YouTube, and once again, I'll drop links down in the description so you can check out both of those. I am down to the final three, and all three of these have been on my want list for ages, and I'm super, super excited to share them with you, especially number two. Number three, Challengers by The New Pornographers. Just last week, I published my top 10 best albums of 2023 video, which included the new Pornographer's 2023 album. Where? You'll have to watch that video next to find out. Challengers is an easy favorite from the Canadian supergroup, and it hits all the right spots for me. It includes some of my favorites from the band, and cover to cover, I think it is probably their most solid release, except for maybe their new 2023 release. Now, there's really nothing special about this pressing that makes it stand out from other reissues of Challengers. It doesn't have any supplemental inserts, it's not on colored vinyl, it's just kind of a standard repress with, you know, unique etchings in the runout. But I don't care, it's number three simply because how much I love this record. And I must mention that the band's 2003 LP electric version also received a reissue this year for its 20th anniversary. I just have an original pressing right here, so really it's not on this list. But that one did come on this cool blue vinyl, so seek that one out. Number two, Moth by X Lovers. And <laughs> I gotta throw out there because of YouTube's policy on bodies, I've got some band-aids that I put on the outer sleeve, which is still in its shrink, so we can hide the bits. <laughs> Gotta love it. Moth was another surprise. X Lovers is a little known band out of the UK that released a handful of singles and EPs and a lone album between 2008 and 2012. The album Moth, which I have right here, was released in 2012 on CD only. I remember getting a digital copy coming across my desk back in about 2012 when I was actively writing for my music blog Fence Post, and I became obsessed with this album. I always wondered why it wasn't pressed to vinyl, and that changed this year when P Vine out of Japan gave it its first vinyl pressing. Inside you get emotive indie rock with hints of shoegaze. Think of a less fuzzed out rendition of The Pains of Being Pure at Heart, or a less electronic Letting Up Despite Great Faults, whose self-titled debut was also reissued on vinyl for the first time by P. Vine, I believe, a few years ago. Cover to cover, this album is brilliant. If you like the emotive teen angst side of shoegaze, this album is for you. I would not be surprised if this ends up on my top 10 albums I listened to in 2023 list. The question is, where will it fall? Stay tuned for that one as it's coming up here in a few weeks. Gotta finish out the year first. I love the Band-Aid thing. I mean, it just fits, right? I think I'm gonna do that in the future for any albums that have similar issues. And we're on to the final one, number one on the list, and this is the one that would have made that 20th anniversary best of list. Number one, Echoes by The Rapture. This is the album that just missed out on the inclusion in my top 20 albums turning 20 in 2023, or essentially my retrospective best of 2003 list. I had forgotten just how great this album is. There's a lot going on within this LP. At its core, it's indie rock, but it's also electronic and post-punk. The range of styles on here is mind-boggling, especially when you can take how cohesive the album is. It is almost uncanny. Opening track, Oleo, has long been my favorite from the band, but the entire album is pure gold in my opinion. Digging into this album this fall for the first time in many years, it just blew me away. 
Echoes was reissued on vinyl by DFA for the first time this year, and like a lot of others on this list, there's not much new that sets this pressing apart from the original release, outside the fact that it doesn't carry the original's price. But aside from Moth, this LP was easily the reissue I was most excited to add to my collection this year. There's the list, and I'm curious to see what 2024 has in store for us when it comes to violent reissues. Next, check out my top 10 albums of 2023 countdown where I share my favorite new albums of the year. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.